Back in December, I made a video about how an old remake of mine had been used in an actual K-pop production. This meant that, on all levels except credential, I am a K-pop producer. And as an authority on the genre, I felt I owed it to you to show how to make one of the biggest growing global phenomena in music today. This is How to K-pop. So let's get this out of the way. K-pop, pop music from South Korea, is still pop music. And while a lot of this tutorial could just be explaining the concepts of pop, I'll focus more on what makes K-pop unique from Western pop music. And it is worth bringing up Western pop music, as K-pop is not only influenced by Western pop music, but Western pop often has a hand in creating K-pop. Let's go behind the scenes of this BTS album, and you might see some familiar names. Ed Sheeran, Fred Gibson, Ed Sheeran's producer, Troy Sivan, Ali Tampusi, who wrote Let Me Love You, Senorita, and Havana, no, 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 no. EDM Steve Aoki, Andrew Taggart of the EDM Chainsmokers, English band Arcades, EDM Audion. There's also lots of names I've never heard of that seem to be producers that also have had a hand in many Western pop productions. This isn't to say all K-pop is made by Western songwriters or producers, it really isn't. But there was a lot more overlap than I was expecting. I think one of the first noticeable things about K-pop from an outsider perspective is the size of the acts. Western pop is currently dominated by single person acts, whereas the top K-pop acts are these huge group clusters of people. Here we go. BTS have 7 members, TWICE have 9, ONCE, THE BOYS, IZ1, and LUNA all have 12 each, EXO used to have 12 but then 3 members left due to contact disputes, 17 ironically has 13, 14 new had 14 until they disbanded, very sad, 13 ironically has 17, just kidding I made that one up, and NCT has 21. Because K-pop groups have so many members, some groups will split the members into subunits. Let's take the 21 member group NCT as an example. Here are the subunits. NCT U, NCT 127, NCT Dream, NCT NL, Wavy. I don't think Wavy got the memo on how to name their subunit. Anyways, let's get into the music now. I'm going to do this a little differently this time, as there isn't just one style of K-pop music. You have trappy songs. The housey songs. R&B songs. Future bassy tracks. A group will take on multiple of these styles all in the same album. I'm not going to be breaking down each individual genre like I did for that Virtual Riot video, as I am but a mere shell of my former self. One thing I did notice between all different styles are the chord progressions. Whether it's house or future bass or an R&B-ish bridge during a trap song, there are a lot of sweet sounding chord progressions, more complex than your average western pop 4 chord song. These chord progressions make use of cool chord extensions and dominant chords, so we're gonna break some down now.
Let's take a look at this chord progression from Luna Subunit Group Odd Eye Circles track called Girlfront. Oh, that was a mouthful. This is the simplified version. Just some major and minor triad chords in the same key. I'm going to add a seventh to the major and minor chords, however. It's already sounding a bit sweeter and more colorful now. Note this part of the progression. The 2-5-1 is a very common progression, especially in jazz. That dominant 5-1 progression is especially strong. Why, you ask? Just play the 5-1 progression, and you'll hear it has a very resolving sound to it. This can be attributed to the B resolving to the C, and the F to the E as well. If I just play the major scale and stop right at the last note before reaching the note where the scale begins and ends, or the tonic, you feel that tension and you're waiting for it to resolve. There we go. This same tension and resolution is happening in the 5-1 progression and why it's used a lot. Let's add a bit of rhythm. And instead of just having these shorter notes just play the same chord, how about a bit of variation? The chord is really an inverse of the G major chord, but having such a drastic jump between the chords is kind of jarring, but we can easily voice it better by changing the octaves. If you were to play this on piano, it would be a lot easier, as you only need to change the one finger instead of moving your whole hand. With this in mind, I'll often duplicate chords and then change the notes from there and see what cool chords I can come up with instead of writing each chord from the ground up. As the next chord is higher, how about we find a chord that works as a cool transition? I could use the D minor 7 here, and that's not wrong, it's part of the scale and everything, but it's just kind of boring. Remember I mentioned that the 5-1 progression is a very strong progression? Well it's so strong that the 5 chord doesn't even need to be in the same scale that you're in. So if we imagine this E minor 7 chord was temporarily our 1 chord, we could put a 5 chord in front of it, making a strong 5-1 progression. The 5th of E is B, so that's what will make the dominant chord. The F sharp isn't in scale, but it doesn't matter because that 5-1 progression is stronger than love. We could make it a dominant 9 chord too. I don't really like the 9th though, so we could try lowering it. Yeah, cool. What if we accented this upwards movement by moving the root note to the 3rd? Also cool. For this transition, we could do something where we take the whole chord and shift it down to go between these two chords. Let me just voice these chords different just to fill up this space and make it look like the chords flow together. With all these little tricks, we've just managed to change what was a simple and kind of stale chord progression into something a lot more sweet and interesting to listen to. Here's some other chord progressions used in K-pop tracks. What you often do is just repeat the chord progression twice, but then the second time has some differences. It might just be adding some extra notes, or it could be changing one or more chords. You can also see more of that 5-1 or 2-5-1 progression. So now we need some sounds to go with our notes. If you're making a trap beat, then of course you're gonna use an 808, but for other stuff, this future housey pluck is used quite often. There's two ways of achieving this. The simple way is just a funky sawtooth pluck. But often it sounds a little bit more complex than this. So I've layered these sounds together. This one is a modified version of a virtual right preset. Most of the pluck sound comes from this wavetable. That seems to be the secret, choosing a good wavetable. I tried putting some hard bass donks into Serum and I got all right results but there's probably better samples to be using for this. I 
and sometimes there's a bass guitar instead. Then we have the classic brass hit. You could use a brass library for this, but I just looked for good brass samples, one shots, and ended up laying them together. Some other common sounds are electric piano. These xylophony plucks. As most of these acts are big groups, you're gonna have to take turns on who is singing. This is commonly referred to in the trade as the line distribution, basically breaking down what percentage of the track each singer is actually singing. There are channels devoted to tallying up the seconds of each vocalist, like we're betting on a horse race or something. Of course, it's not always just one person singing. Sometimes they sing in unison. This usually happens on the chorus to create that big crowd chanting type feel. Although these songs are in Korean and my understanding of Korean is non-existent, there's actually lots of English phrases thrown into the lyrics, like a phrase or a line here or there. Oh boy, baby I'm full, A to Z, cool, 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 hot, ah, ah, zoom, zoom, A to Z. This is a different song, this is not the same song as the other one. Ugh, hard rock scalp. Samuel Jackson, what's up? Got an automatic dick, got an automatic stick. Sexy free and single, I'm ready to bingo. Also, I came across this weird vocal thing that happens in multiple songs. It's like, na 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 na, na 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 na. I just found it funny. I like it when I find these reoccurring themes. It's like a hidden pattern that I've discovered. When recording vocals, there's a couple tricks you can do to make your vocal track sound cooler than just one vocal on its own. One trick is doubling, where you record the same part again and layer it over the original vocal. You can pan two voices left and right from each other if you want. Or have a main voice in the middle and two other voices left and right. There's really no universal rule on this, but in my opinion, I think it's important that the syllables have a similar timing to each other. They don't have to be sample accurate, but if they're too far apart, the doubling just feels sloppy. Another thing you can do is harmonize the vocal. That's like doubling, except you're singing a different melody line that works nicely with the original vocal. You can harmonize above or even below. And now we're ready to put all the pieces together into one complete song. I worked on this track with fellow producer Henry Young. He's on Spotify and SoundCloud, links in the description. And we also have amazing vocals from Ashley Alicia. You can check her Instagram and YouTube in the description too.
You can listen to this song again on Spotify. No one's stopping you. Thank you to all the collaborators again. A lot of effort went into this one. Any support is appreciated. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Yeah, goodbye.